Have you been told you need to stop doing what you love, whether it's exercise, running, or a sport? Well, here at Dynamic, we don't like that answer. In this podcast, we'll talk to leaders in the health and wellness space from Southwest Florida to get the solutions you need to get you back to doing what you love. Welcome to the Dynamic Naples Podcast. What's going on, Naples? Today, I'm coming at you with another solo podcast. Uh, Well, semi-solo. I do have my three-year-old daughter sitting next to me, so you may hear some background noises because she's watching some cartoons. Anyways, today I want to talk about the sacroiliac joint, uh, the SI joint. You may have heard of this one. Um, commonly gets blamed as being back pain. I mean, it kind of, it's like back and hip, it it doesn't really matter. It's kind of right in the middle. Um, so where is it? It's where the sacrum and pelvis meet. That is called your sacroiliac joint or SI joint for short. So let me first start off by just saying that it's kind of a contentious topic in physical therapy. Um, pretty well debated, uh, you ask 10 physios about it, They some will th- think it's not even a thing, some think it, it totally is, and probably everything in between. Um, so I'm of the camp that it can definitely be a pain generator. And the reason for that is some personal bias. I've actually I've dealt with SI joint pain myself. I had that fall down the elevator shaft and fractured my pelvis, turned into a lot of SI joint pain, and sort of the right set of things and exercise and movements made it feel better. And also just from what I see in my clinic, because I do treat it a ton, and I feel like it's my specialty. Um, so I, I just, I'm, I want to give you my perspective on how I approach this thing. But before I go down the road, let's uh, give you a little more background on some of the symptoms, some of the thinking behind it. Uh, so it's usually pain that you can point to with like one finger. That's There's even a test, it's called the Fortin finger test, where someone takes their index finger or their thumb and they say, I have pain right here, and they point point directly to that joint to me that's almost like the most reliable indicator um so it can be sharp it can be dull um it can travel it can turn into sciatic type symptoms it can travel down the leg it can come a groin pain um usually people will have difficulty sitting for a while difficulty turning in bed uh sometimes other things like a bursitis come along for the ride some it band pain so this thing has a lot of secondary sort of repercussions. One of the reasons why it's so heated is uh, of a debate is that it doesn't move much, the joint. So f- picture a circle. of uh, That's basically your, your pelvic girdle. So you get your sacrum, which turns into two uh, pelvic bones, which meet in the middle. So it's a continuous circle, and it's pretty rigid. Uh, there is like millimeters of movement, if that, between the sacrum and pelvis. And if you look at an image of this joint, you'll see it's covered all this white stuff. What is all that white stuff? It's ligaments. It's wrapped in tons and tons of ligaments. Uh, ligaments hold bone to bone. Not, it's not like a muscle. It's not contractile. It's not meant to be stretched and pulled and tugged. So uh, ligaments, once they get kind of overstretched, they're kind of overstretched. And that can be really irritable. Uh, and uh, what I think might happen is that they inflame and leak onto the sciatic nerve. Because the sciatic nerve does run right through that area. And that, you know, severe, you know, severe enough can cause some of the sciatica type symptoms. So I see this kind of happening for four different reasons. So uh, one of our general sort of things we learn in school is a kind of a lens to approach the body and treatment is that you can have pain with looseness or pain with stiffness. Um, so that's very, very general rule of thumb. It, it just gives a template to start thinking about how to go about uh, deciding what to do for somebody. So uh, sometimes I'll, you know, I kind of lump this into pain with looseness. So if you have a lot of weak hip muscles, because the, especially the glute medius and minimus, some of those hip rotators, those all stabilize the, the hip. And if they're not doing their job, theoretically, you could get what we would call probably like a micro instability. Um, again, that's a very loose idea. Um, hard to research this type of stuff. But I do know that when I test people's muscles, if they're really weak in the glutes, they kind of set themselves up for this. Especially, I will point out too, uh, with pregnancy. So during pregnancy, your body secretes a hormone called relaxin, which loosens the ligaments of the pelvis in preparation for delivery. So if you, and then it does firm back up, but not always in, you know, quote unquote, the right position, or there may be some instability that, that came along with it. So if you kind of are in this position, you already have a little bit of weakness in the area, and you've had multiple pregnancies, there's a, you know, good chance you can develop this. So that's kind of reason one, pain with some looseness or instability, for lack of a better word. 
Uh, reason number two is kind of the opposite, so the pain with stiffness. Um, so if you, this is where I really like this idea of the Rubik's Cube. I got this, by the way, from a physio up in New Jersey, Jared Cooper. He, he likens the whole thing to, like, picture a Rubik's Cube, but it's got, like, two columns instead of three. So you get this ability for the these plates to kind of shift back and forth on each other. And if you look at all the muscles that attach to the pelvis, which is a ton of them, by the way, and you get these imbalances from side to side, it can cause an issue. So in the front of the, the pelvis, you've got your, you know, abs, uh, obliques, things like that. In the back, you've got the QL and lat. And, the, and then the back, bottom side, you get your, your butt muscles and the hamstrings. And then in the front, you get your hip flexors, rectus femoris, I find to be a big one, which is one of your quad muscles. So if you, when I measure somebody, I look to see if there's a gross asymmetry, a large difference from side to side. The idea that we're going to be perfectly symmetrical is kind of, it's not, not really a thing. But if you have somebody has one quad that's like 20 to 30 degrees stiffer on one side, you can picture that because of the attachment to the pelvis, it's pulling in one direction with every step you take. And over time, maybe that's causing, you know, provoking that SI joint, maybe putting stretch or whatever you're going to call it on the, the ligaments and causing that pain. And then there's the combo. So there's the, the person that's got a really stiff something or other and a really weak something or other. And that, you know, that can really set somebody up for getting SI pain. So the, the, number one, pain with looseness. Number two, pain with stiffness and or combo. All right. Number three is just straight up trauma. I've certainly seen a fair amount of like motor vehicle accidents that can cause this. Sometimes someone's uh, leg and knee just run into the dash, and that will drive the femur backwards into the socket of the hip, and that can be enough to create irritation of the SI joint. Um, I've seen things as silly as someone like stepping off a curb awkwardly, uh, or like getting their, whole, their foot stuck in a hole, um, and they kind of yank their, their leg kind of violently. And if you take one of those scenarios where maybe one side is really stiff or probably even more so if something's like really weak, so it has too much ability to move, and you do something like step up, step off a curb in an awkward manner, that could be enough to do it. And lastly, uh, there's this idea of the neighboring joint. Uh, so this is basically where the SI joint might be a secondary problem. There's a primary issue somewhere else. Um, and it kind of overlaps with the pain with stiffness idea. Um, or looseness for that matter, but uh, sometimes I'll find somebody with a very stiff lumbar spine. Um, gol this happens to golfers a lot, and this actually used to happen to me. I used to be pretty stiff in the lumbar spine, and way before I was a physical therapist, I would sort of sit in my driver's side, uh, in, car, in the car, in the driver's side, and I would twist my back to one side, probably feeling the need to relieve some stiffness, and I would kind of like self-crack my back, and then it would turn into SI joint pain. Um, so what I think was happening is I was taking up all the, the room, the slack in my lumbar spine, and then I was forcing something else to move and it was probably my SI joint. Um, so sometimes if you have a pain somewhere, you look next door and sometimes it's next door to next door. Um, that's where you feel, find the real problem. In fact, the reason I did this whole episode is I've got a pickleball player that I have in mind, um, yeah, he's a really good pickleball player, and uh, he developed some SI pain. I looked at everything. He was strong. There was no issues with strength. Uh, muscles looked pretty symmetric. It turned out his ankle on one side was really stiff from a previous injury, and it completely changed the way he got out of a chair, squatted. It changed his knee position. His knee would kind of cave in a little bit to one side, and that started to cause shear at the SI joint. So we just fixed his ankle, and the SI joint pain completely went away. I see this a lot too, like a similar thing with um, hip impingement. With hip impingement, you tend to lose a lot of hip internal rotation. Um, kind of a hard uh, position to describe in an audio podcast, but just know that if you're missing uh, rotation of the hip and then you try to move a certain way, you can cause more shear at that SI joint. So for treatment options, I mean, this, this responds really well to physical therapy. I don't think I've ever had to send anybody to surgery for this or anything like that. I mean, there are SI joint fusions out there, um, but they're kind of rare. And a lot of people get cortisone injections in the joint. And, um, you know, I usually don't tell people to go get them, but they do have a diagnostic purpose. So if you get a cortisone injection in that joint and it relieves your pain, then you're pretty sure that's, that's the area causing the pain. So what do we do in therapy? We basically try to balance your system. So first we kind of try to do what's called a pelvic reset. A really easy thing to do. You just take advantage of like a push-pull mechanism of your muscles um, and try to 
get things feeling a little happier. And then we just restore what's missing. So if that's a range of motion issue on one side or if that's a strength issue, um, that's that's where we start. And we start off doing a lot of things bilateral so we don't cause too much shear at the joint. So that's things like squatting, um, deadlifting, things like that, where both legs are fixed. And then we move into more complex motions once the pain's really gone uh, and get the thing nice and stable. Anyways, uh, with that pickleball player in mind, I have created um, a pickleball course. It's the Pickleball Performance Program. It's available uh, for download, so it's a digital program with uh, 29 videos that you can follow along to. It is to, uh, because I get this question a lot, like, what should I do before I play to prevent injury? So it goes over, I think it's 14 warm-up exercises. And then also, I think the more important question that I don't get asked is, uh, what should I do afterwards to recover from sport? It's got 15 videos of things you can do, things like self-massage and uh, certain mobility exercises to, to treat stuff before it arises. And since I just launched the program, I'm running a coupon special. Um, it's normally a $49 program. It'll be $19 for a limited time if you use the code PB19, like Pickleball19. I will definitely drop a link in the show notes. Uh, other than that, I will talk to you guys soon. Do you have unexplained pain, or do you wonder just how healthy you are? When was the last time you had your blood tested? Blood chemistry analysis is a great way to stay ahead of any health conditions, and now you can have control of your health with Let's Get Checked. Let's Get Checked is an incredible company that sends blood tests to your home. You can choose from over 30 different tests, whether that's liver function, testosterone, micronutrient, cholesterol, or C-reactive protein, which is a marker for inflammation. It's sent to you with free shipping, and you get your results in two to five days, no physician referral needed. Use the code DPT30 for 30% off. Go to letsgetcheck.com and use the code DPT30. Did you know that you can get started with physical therapy without a physician's referral? Physical therapists don't just solve pain. We get down to the root cause and keep it from coming back. We also discuss all things health, such as nutrition and lifestyle changes. If you feel that you could use some help, let's get on a free console call. Go to www.dynamicnaples.com and sign up for a free call. Also, if you like this podcast, please give us a rating wherever you listen to podcasts. It helps us spread the message. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.